This looks kind of cool, right? The boxes thing. That must have taken hours, or I bought a script. Nope. This time on Solven FX. Hey, yeah, and welcome. I saw several posts recently on various forums where the OP was asking how to make an animation like this, but, you know, easily. And the answers range from buy this to just do that. And, you know, I was a little intrigued. Wish this avatar could crack its knuckles. On the face of it, there are several ways to manage this in After Effects. You can mask each image and animate the masks, but that's very labour intensive. You can use shape layers, but you have to overcome the anchor points being set in the centre. Or you could use expressions to drive everything, and that's the method I've settled on. And while some non-coders may recoil in terror, all the expressions I'm going to use are straightforward, almost identical, and there's a project in the description for you to copy if it's easier. First thing I'm going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid, and make it a red, comp size solid, and click OK. Hit Enter and rename this to Box 1. I could use a full comp size shape layer here, but I want to avoid confusion for you. We're going to ignore the solid's own transform properties and instead go to Effect, Distort, Transform. Later on, we're going to add another effect, and I don't want the scale to affect it. Set the anchor point to 0, 0. And do the same for the position. Then uncheck Uniform Scale, and set keyframes for each. Anchor point and position settings have placed the solid to fill the screen, but if I adjust the scale, you can see it grows from the top left corner. Tap U to show the keyframes on the timeline. Now create a new blue solid. And call it Box 2. And add the transform effect again. This time, set its anchor to be 1920, or your comps width, by 0. And its position to be 1920 by 0 as well. So now this box grows from the top right. Uncheck the uniform scaling here too, and for the height, use the pick whip to link it to box 1's height property. Quick dip to expose this effect in the timeline, double click on the property you want to see. For scale width, hold down the alt key and click on the stopwatch, and type 100 minus. Then use the pick whip to link to box 1's scale width value. So as box 1 widens, box 2 will shrink. But they are touching. So with box 1 selected, go to Effect, Mat, Simple Choker, and set the value to about 60. Then copy this effect to box 2. Because this is now happening after the scaling, the roundness remains the same scale. Now, create a new green solid, and call it, um, box 3. And with the transform effect added again, this time set its anchor point to 0, 1080. So far left and the height of the comp. And repeat these values for position. Then uncheck the uniform scaling, and for the height set its value to 100 minus box 1 scale height. and set a keyframe for its width. Now copy the simple choker effect to this layer as well, and tap U to see the scale width value. Fourth box. Let's go purple. And box the fourth. and the anchor and position to the comp's width and height, in my case 1920 by 1080. Uncheck Uniform Scaling, and for the scale height, it's the same as box 3, 100 minus box 1's height. And for the scale width, 100 minus box 3's scale width. And 
and there you go. You've now got four boxes which resize based on three sets of keyframes. To use with images for videos, drag your first video clip into the timeline and use the track mat options to make box one its track mat. But we're looking at the video's top corner, which isn't ideal. We want the video in the center of the box, but as the box grows or shrinks, we want it to stay there. Tap P to expose its position properties, then hold Alt and click on the stopwatch and type var x equals this comp dot width note the capital C, times, and use the pick whip to link to the scale width on box one. Divide by 200, semicolon. This code determines the size in pixels of the solid by converting it from a percentage, which is where the 100 comes in, but then halving it so we get to position the video based on the anchor point being in the middle of the video. I know it may sound confusing, but trust me, on a new line type, y equals this comp dot height times and pick whip the scale height divided by 200, semicolon, new line, square brackets x comma y, close square brackets. So now our video layer's position will remain central to the box. And as long as it's scaled so it's never smaller than box one, it's going to respond to the resizing keyframes. Now, if you're thinking, oh no, I've got to make variations of that complex code. Nah, just chill. With your video layer selected, hold down Control and tap D to duplicate it. Then hold Alt while dragging in another video from the project panel. And it replaces the duplicate. Change its track map to box 2. Then edit the position expression to refer to box 2 instead of box 1. But then after the x equals, edit the expression to add this comp dot width minus. You see, it's not that scary. Duplicate video one again and replace it with your third video. Then alter the position expression like this, changing the y expression and making sure to update the box numbers. And for video the fourth, duplicate video three. And set the minus elements to both the X and Y variables. And there you go. You can still adjust the scale and if needed the anchor points for the videos and use the alt replace trick to swap out different videos. If you wanted to add a third video or a third row, the mathematics get a little trickier, but this is the basic principle. The project is in the description. Please think about liking, subscribing, coffeeing. In that downloaded example, I've also left space for a text layer using a slider to adjust the amount to make the gap width. The expression is slightly more complicated to position the text, but not much. Oh, and to add a background like in this example, I created a new solid and added the smoke rising background preset. Then I just tweaked the settings to get a little texture rather than a lot, moved the keyframes to the length of the comp and dropped it underneath everything. So that's it. Enjoy. Probably should have come up with a better sign off really. Oh, I know. Did you hear the one about 